Hello everyone, in this video we'll be going over unlocking the bootloader for the Nexus 6P and for the Nexus 5X. Now this also applies to a lot of other devices, but I know for a fact that these two brother-sister devices should have the same bootloader unlocking process. Now this video isn't going to be a full rooting tutorial, you can have a look at the video up in the top right hand corner or the, in the links down below in the more info if you want a full on rooting tutorial. This one will just plainly show you how to unlock the bootloader. So to begin, of course you need your device here and we need to go into settings and then from there you'll need to go scroll all the way down to system and then go to about phone and from here we need to enable the developer options so tap on your build number seven times and then you'll be presented with this screen to confirm with your pattern or password and do that now it says you are a developer down here and all you need to do is go back one and then head over to the new developer options from here you'll need to find this line where it says oem unlocking and all you need to do there is enable that and you'll need to confirm your pattern pin or passcode once more and then also tap on allow or enable OEM unlocking and the switch should be on just like that. Now when you unlock the bootloader this will wipe your device so any photos, music, videos, apps, accounts, everything on your device will be deleted so you will have to set everything up again. So make sure you back up things that you need before doing this. Of course our phone hasn't wiped just yet but the procedures we'll be doing very shortly after we'll do that. So now we need to head back to our computer because we need to download a few things to begin our process here. So the first thing is the SDK platform tools. Now I'll be downloading the one for Windows obviously, but on Mac and Linux they are mostly the same. So I want to click on SDK platform tools for Windows, agree and to the terms and conditions and then click on the blue download link here. I'm going to save everything in one folder called Android just to make it easier and just download that. And the other thing that you might need to download on Windows is the Google USB drivers. Now sometimes you don't need to because Windows can automatically download them from Windows Update and then install that for you as well. So you might not need to install these manually, but it's always a good idea to have the Google USB drivers installed before we head over to the bootloader anyways. So click on this link here to download the Google USB drivers. You'll need to read and accept the terms and conditions as well, and then click on the blue download button. And by the end of all this, you should have two files here. So the platform tools and our USB drivers. So we can uh, minimize the, our Chrome window. And the first thing we'll open up is the USB drivers. And you'll see there's just a folder called USB underscore driver. So extract that. And then we can close the zip file. And in here, open up the USB driver folder. And then you should see this Android underscore win USB. It should say .inf, but if you do not have... Um, the file extensions shown, then you'll just see Android underscore win USB. So find this file and right click on it and then click on install. And once it doesn't do anything after a little bit, it should only take a few seconds and you'll be fine. So that installs the drivers to our system. If you do get an error while doing this, you might not need this. And there's also another way to install it as well, which I will briefly go over later. So once you have right clicked and installed this file, you can go back and then open up the platform tools zip file and just extract the entirety of the platform tools. Now once you have this set up in a way where you can use it as you please, you don't need to keep on downloading the platform tools again and again. You just need to use the ones that you already have, but it is very important that you ensure that you do have the latest version. So it wouldn't hurt to come back to the site here to download the platform tools and below check the revisions here because you can check the version of the platform tools as well, which is always handy to do. Now once you have these files extracted, all you need to do now is reboot our phone into the bootloader. So we're going to head back to our phone here, and all you need to do is with your phone plugged in at the bottom, hold the power button, and then tap on restart, and hold the volume down button once the screen turns black or freezes, so now. Just keep holding that until our phone boots into the bootloader. It might take a while, so just keep holding it. And once you're in, you can let go, and you should be greeted with this screen. So right now it says locked. Down here, device is locked under battery and console, and that we're going to change that right now. So let's head over back to our PC here and then open up the platform tools folder. In here, you need to open up a terminal or a at least a command prompt window here to use these executables because they are command line based. And a shortcut to do this in Windows, you can go up to the address bar and then type in CMD. Make sure there's nothing but CMD here. You can hit enter and that will bring up a command prompt window already changed to the same location as where everything else is. So you can see E platform, so Android platform tools, and that says command prompt, but 
you should see it the same here as well. Another way is you can right click and hold shift at the same time in an empty space. And there's also a open PowerShell window here option if you want to use that. But we'll be sticking with the command prompt window. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. You just have to run the programs a little bit differently. So once you have the command prompt window open, we can now head over to the device manager to double check that our device has the correct drivers installed. So you can right click on the start button and then click on device manager. On Windows 7, you'll need to right click on computer and then click on manage and then click on device manager. And you should see one of two options, either Lee mobile Android device down here and you should see Android bootloader interface. Now, if you see a device, you know, um, probably under Android and it has a orange or yellow question mark or exclamation mark next to it, just right click on that device, click on update driver, and then browse my computer for drivers. And you can use this location, this browse, so browse to where you have extracted your USB driver, this folder that we extracted earlier. So you can do that. So I'm going to go to where I have that saved, so just as an example. I'm sure you can just click on the root directory. And I've already have the drivers installed from Lee Mobile, so that's fine. But another way you can do it is, again, we browse to my computer, and you can also click from, or select from a list of available drivers that are already installed. So the first one here I know is the Lee Mobile one, and the second one here is the Google USB drivers. So if I install these, you'll see this change, and the things go back up to the top under Android device, instead of Lee Mobile Android device. So if you have Android device or Lee Mobile device, Android device, then you should be okay. But if you have something else, like for example, Samsung or um, Alcatel or something like that, some other brand name bootloader interface, you might want to uninstall that. So you can right click uninstall device and make sure you have, and then reinsert your device. So plug it back in again and make sure you have either the Google one. So this would be the Google Android device. If I go to properties here by Google or the one by Lee Mobile. So you need to make sure that you have one of those installed. Otherwise you might run into problems. But of course, if you have any questions or you're a bit confused by this, just uh, comment down below or join us on Discord and uh, we'll be more than happy to help, help you out there. But once you have your drivers configured properly, you can go back to your command prompt window. And if you type in fastboot devices, you should see your device's serial number right here, which is correct. So from there, we're going to just type in one simple command. And as a result of this command, it will wipe all of your data. Then we're going to type in fastboot flashing, unlock, like so. And you should see the screen on our phone change here. It's just gonna ask us if we want to actually unlock the bootloader. In this case, it's already selected yes, so we can press the power button. And you can see it will say unlock and then unlocked. And then on our computer, we also see the uh, results of that printed backup onto our command prompt window. And your device is now in the bootloader again, which is cool. So all you have to do now is just press the start and our phone will wipe itself in the stock recovery and then boot up into Android. And you can see the padlock here as well when the Google logo shows up. And that's a good sign that we're unlocked already. So once you have your bootloader unlocked, you can pretty much root your phone whenever you like, install custom recoveries, and I guess the most exciting part, installing custom ROMs. Now, there are tons of ROMs out there for the Nexus 6P, you know, ranging from Marshmallow ROMs all the way to Oreo and Pi ROMs for our device, which is very exciting. So definitely check out the XDA forums for the Nexus 6P in case you want to have a look at any custom ROMs. But if you're looking to root, then you can also follow that video down below as well. And you can just skip all this bootloader unlock stuff since you've already done it as well. So thank you so much, guys, for watching. And as always, if you have any other questions or queries, please feel free to leave them down below in the comment section, or even better yet, join us on Discord where we can help you out pretty much instantly, as long as we're online, of course. It's just much easier to keep track of messages uh, than compared with the YouTube comment system, which we all know is a bit terrible. So thanks for watching, and as always, happy flashing.